What's up? My name is Mike Yakovlev, and I'm going to show you how I made this. It's the third piece in my Akira series. For those who don't know, um, I'm basically recreating iconic Akira shots in 3D. Um, I've been rendering them in Eevee, and it's been great practice for my modeling, lighting, and composition. I'm also picking up a lot of little things here and there. So if you dig this and if you want to see the progress, make sure to follow me on Insta. And if you want to support me, check out my Patreon. So at first glance, this thing looks insanely complicated. And I was feeling overwhelmed, but once I started to look closer, I realized that it was a bunch of primitive shapes kind of slapped together. For example, the core is just like a pole with a bunch of smaller like tubes and little cable bits all stuck to it, kind of like bundled around it. And then the signs, they are also just like boxes and rectangles. And when you really just look at the silhouette of it. And so that's what I tried to focus on. So when I jumped straight into Blender at first, I was just kind of eyeballing it. And well, after giving it an honest go, I needed to switch up my approach. I realized I could use this markup tool to sketch out the shapes. And since the whole thing was basically an X looking top down and the pole was like right in the middle of the X, it made it a lot easier to sketch from those two perspectives, like the X and the Y. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> so I jumped straight into the side view and roughly blocked out the shapes and their proportions to each other. And then I was able to jump from, from the other side, like a 90 degree angle from the other side and sketch out the same thing. All while constantly checking back between my drawing and the screenshot. And it just kind of was a lot easier for me to use my hand to sketch all this stuff out versus blocking it out. After that, it was like coloring within the lines. I could more easily start blocking out pieces with some really simple shapes. I tried to keep it simple as long as I could and resist the urge to bevel. I always bevel things too early and then spend a good chunk of time just like cleaning up the mess. After that, I blocked out the smaller details, little boxy bits, things coming off the larger shapes. The smaller details were really a lot of guesswork uh, on what it could be, what it might be. I really just had to give it my best guess. Then I worked on this section, which kind of looked like the core pole, which all of these signs hung off of. So I spent a good time adding creases, cuts, sections, just really looking at the reference and wherever there was a cut or a line, I would just kind of add that in. I spent time putting in all the little details because I knew that I would just take this and then duplicate it three times around the pole. Once I got far enough on that whole assembly, I moved on to adding the structural details of the base of the pole. Again, a lot of just educated guesses, how things probably slotted together and guessing how things were assembled. I really gotta give props to the original artist. The fact that I was able to make a full 3D model that made sense from this one angle just shows how much thought was put into this one item, especially since it only shows on screen for like two seconds. Then on this crossing sign, I love how the screenshot shows exactly the front and the back at the same time. So that really helped a lot when I was modeling this section. When I, so when I'm modeling, one thing I try to do is just duplicate the planes and the shapes that are already there instead of adding a new cube and making a new shape right away. And here comes my favorite part. I figured I did enough and I earned myself a little reward with some delicious beveling. Now I'm starting to kind of bring it home with the finer details. At this stage, it's a lot more manageable because the silhouette and the structure has already been nailed down from earlier. For the grid, I counted the lines in both directions off the reference and then added that number of loop cuts. Onto that, I added a wireframe modifier, applied it, and then stretched it out so that it had that depth that I was looking for. I also beveled the corners or the edges so that it wouldn't be super duper sharp. Then I just needed to kind of put it back in place and make it fit the frame. I was really proud of it. I was really proud of it. 
So finishing off, I worked on this bottom bit here, which looked like two screens with this little wire connecting them. Maybe this longer bit had like arrows pop up for different times of the day or warning messages of some kind. And then this top bit, which since the shape was already there from earlier, and it had this, what looked like a wire, like a metal wire along the outside edge of it. The way I got that wire edge was I take, I took an edge, selected the whole edge around that shape, duplicated it, separated it as its own object, and then in object mode, converting it to a curve, gave it some thickness, and then put it right, right snug up against the edge of that sign, and uh, it was done. As you can see modeling wise, this isn't much different from where we left off. The whole center section is just a bunch of tubes randomly shaped up and, and hugging the whole core and mostly facing the side of the camera. The back side doesn't really have as much going on. I snake this little curve through everything, just like that red cable you see there. And like how I mentioned earlier, the whole section was just then duplicated around three more times. And then these two parts here, like this one's missing this part, and then this one's missing this part. But that's really like the whole bulk of how I made, how I put this model together. So I really hope that I was able to make a little bit of sense in my explanation of it. I hope that the visuals kind of helped. But um, thank you for watching. And if you like this video, obviously give it a like, whatever, subscribe, leave a comment. I'd love to hear what you think. And um, yeah, support me on all my socials. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.